a letter was sent from PCO with a list of recommended candidates. Uh, someone has to be held accountable. Ultimately, it was the minister who must be held accountable. But I think Canadians deserve to know if the PCO signed off on Ms. Versharon's name as a recommended candidate, notwithstanding the very serious... Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Madame McClymont, uh, you spoke about an open, transparent, and merit-based approach with respect to governor and council appointments. With respect to the process that ultimately led to the appointment of Annette Versharon to serve as chair of SDTC, uh, how did the search begin? Was there a public posting for the position of chair? Mr. Chair, as I mentioned, uh, the chair process uh, was launched in 2018, and absolutely that's part of our standard process that we post a notice of opportunity on our website uh, for any Canadian to apply. Uh, and uh, so it, it would have that would have been on our portal. There is also an outreach strategy that the department undertakes with colleagues to make sure that we are um, attracting uh, candidates. So, so with respect to that outreach strategy, was a firm hired to identify prospective candidates? Not to my knowledge. In this case, we have no record of a firm having been hired, Mr. Chair. When did uh, Annette Fair Sharon make a submission with respect to her application? So, Minister, Mr. Chair, as I mentioned from the outset, there will be limitations in terms of personal information that I'm not able to divulge. But I would refer back to the Ethics Commissioner report that does detail in some length uh, her, um, Ms. Versharen's um, application process, if you will. Um, so she she did uh, mention, I, I believe, in the report that she had uh, applied. Well, well, we know we know that the minister's office approached Ms. Versharen. In April, did she apply before that or after that? Was the was she recommended as part of the outreach initiative, or was it the minister's office? Because it appears that it was the minister's office that specifically went to Ms. Versharon. Mr. Chair, I have no knowledge. Um, I would have but to thank you for that. How many candidates were considered? Mr. Chair, as I mentioned, um, there will be limitations in terms of personal information. In terms I'm not of asking for candidates. personal information. I'm just asking for an approximate n a number. It was it was under 10, I would say. I would be able to say it's under 10, Mr. Chair. It's under 10. Now, you mentioned that there was a letter of advice uh, sent to the minister with recommended qualified candidates. Was Ms. Versharen's name on that list? Mr. Chair, given its personal information, and we have provided documents to the, the as part of the House motion uh, in terms of the the letter, I w I wouldn't be able to to say. Um, Madam McClymont, I I would letter. submit it's a highly pertinent question because there are serious issues surrounding Ms. Versharen having conflicts of interest, including having received twelve million dollars in funding from SDTC. A letter was sent from PCO with a list of recommended candidates. Uh, someone has to be held accountable. Ultimately, it was the minister who must be held accountable. But I think Canadians deserve to know if the PCO signed off on Ms. Versharen's name as a recommended candidate, notwithstanding the very serious conflicts of interest at play. Mr. Chair, perhaps one way I could come at the question is to note that the Ethics Commissioner notes in his report that she was uh, part of the process and that PCO had told her prior to being considered for appointment that she needed to discuss her potential conflicts uh, with, uh, with, uh, with, with the Commissioner. So I think one can take from that and draw a conclusion. I'm, I'm not comfortable to go further in terms of uh, protecting personal information. Well, okay, if, in the would letter. it be, maybe I'll ask you this. Is it possible that someone not on the list of qualified or recommended qualified candidates could ultimately uh, be appointed by the minister? Could that happen? 
Mr. Chair, I would I would note that in my time in this role, I have never seen us make an appointment that go that does not go off an advice letter. Uh, now, uh, with respect to that letter of advice, is that letter signed off by the Prime Minister's office? Mr. Chair, as we have detailed on our website, the, the selection committee is chaired by the Privy Council office, and so it would have been one of my colleagues in my group who would have signed off on the letter of advice to, to the minister. There would have been PMO involvement? Yes or no? Because you, you said PMO was part of the process, so would that have been signed off on? Mr. Chair, as I noted, yes, the Prime Minister's office uh, would have been part of the appoint uh, selection process alongside ourselves, uh, the Minister's office, and the Department. When did the... Mr. Cooper, I'm afraid that is your time. Okay. Apologies. Uh, turn, didn't mean to cut you off like that. You'll have another